Bum ba dum Banjo Ben here. Hey, last week I taught a couple solos for Wildwood Flower over on the website for the Gold Pick members. One of them was kind of a straight ahead version, and then we did a cross pick version. And what I love about those two styles is how it treats the melody, where it places the melody. Let's listen to those two solos and let's just hear the difference between the two. Roll that footage. Okay, could you hear the difference? I'm sure that you could. Um, what was the difference? Well, of course, the cross-picking version has a lot more notes that are being played, but there's more to it than that. Yes, it's also maybe a little bit more difficult to play, but there's even more to it than that. What I really like to think about is what it does with the melody, because the straight-ahead version, which I might call kind of a square approach, places the melody on the downbeats. And while with Flower, that primarily falls on the first, third, and fourth beats. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. But whenever we cross pick, we're actually going to shift that around a little bit. We're not going to make the measures bigger or longer. We're not going to add any melody notes. We're just going to take those melody notes and scoot them around. Let me just play it for you um, once back to back. I'll just play the first line square and then play it in cross picking, and then we'll look at it on tab. Here's a square version. Listen to the melody line. Let's take a look at it on the tab and you'll see what I'm talking about. Whenever we think about a square version, our melody notes are falling right on the downbeats. There's our melody notes for the square melody approach. And if you think about where those beats are, we've got our first beat, second beat, third beat, fourth beat, and so on. Always falling on the downbeat. However, whenever we go into our syncopated melody that is given to us by a cross-picking technique, where are our melody notes? Well, the same melody notes are there. But what do we notice about them? First beat, second beat, third beat, fourth beat. What we notice is that our melody note is falling in between the second and third beat. The first melody note's falling on the first beat, the third melody note's falling on the fourth beat, but we're sticking this middle melody note right in the middle of the measure. And what that's gonna do, is just cause our ears to perk up and say, you know, something's different about this. Not to mention that we're throwing those other notes in there that create kind of a banjo type feel. So I just encourage you, whenever you're playing Wildwood Flower or you're playing other melodies that um, maybe kind of square, might could get a little bit boring, that you attempt to put some uh, cross-picking rolls with them. You may wonder how you do that. Well, I have lessons teaching you how to do that on the site, but easy enough, we can just create the chord patterns with our fret hand and play those forward rolls through them, changing with our melody notes. Now, if you want to learn more about those particular solos, Wildwood Flower, I have them on the website for all my Gold Pick members at BenjaminClark.com. If you like this video and you want to be notified whenever they drop, make sure and subscribe to this channel, like the video, hit that little bell icon, and I'll be back with you soon with some more cool banjo guitar and mandolin tricks. Adios. Mm -hmm.